everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today I have part two of our white bean and kale food extravaganza. Now, a couple minutes ago I made my kale and white bean flatbread appetizer and I'll link that video right here if you want to see that one. That is the base for this kale and white bean soup recipe. So if you just want to make the soup, you have to make the kale and white bean base first. You should plan to do these like in the same week. It's a great weekend project. Like if you're having guests over on Saturday night, you can make the appetizer that afternoon and then just um, stick the rest of it in the fridge in a zipper bag and get it out when you're ready to make the soup. And maybe on Sunday make the soup and have it percolating in the crock pot all day so that you have your Sunday night dinner ready whenever you want it. I'm going to make it on the stove top, but after it's done on the stove top, you can pour the whole thing in a crock pot and have it bubbling away. It's nice and warm and hearty um, and it's a delicious soup. So let's get started. Here are the ingredients that you'll need to make this. We're going to need a couple of ribs of celery that you're going to chop up. You're going to need uh, two carrots that are going to be chopped. You need some sausages. I'm using a chicken sausage for this one. Last time I made it, I made it with a um, andouille sausage, spicy andouille sausage. It's really good with the spicy sausage. I don't have that today, so I'm using this um, sun-dried tomato and chicken sausage. So it's going to taste a little bit different. You can use linguisa or you can use chorizo. I like to buy the turkey linguisa and chorizo because it's a little bit lower in fat and it gives the soup a really nice heat. What else? Of course you need the soup starter, which is the appetizer base that we made the other day, the white bean and kale. And then I like to add more white beans because I like a lot of white beans in my soup. So I have another can of white beans. I have, um, this is four cups of free range chicken broth, organic. We have olive oil and just a little more red pepper flakes and thyme to add a little more spice to it. So that's everything we'll need. You need a big kind of stock pot on your stove to pre-cook everything in and then you can throw it on your crock pot. Sadly, crock pot recipes, I hate it when you have to cook everything on your stove first and then put it in your crock pot, but apparently that's the way most of them are. So, And as you can see, I have my sausages pre-cooked already. I cooked them last night to get them ready for today. So you just need to brown those up in a pan. If I didn't mention it before, I don't think I did, the printable copy of this recipe is available on my blog and I can't link it in the video but I will link it in the info box below. So right below this video there's an info box and if you don't see the link right there you just press the show more button and it will open up the box and then you'll be able to see everything in there. Okay, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is heat up our pan. You're going to put the heat on to uh, medium high. Since the base already has onions and garlic in it, you can add more onions and garlic just to zip up the soup, but they're already in there. Um, instead of having to re-chop so many things, I am just going to put in a little bit of uh, pre-chopped garlic from the jar to warm up with a little bit of olive oil. That was probably a tablespoon or two. And then, because you know you can never have too much garlic, so I'm just going to throw in like a teaspoon of garlic. And while that heats up, we will just chop the carrots and the celery and then I'm going to chop the celery. And that is all set and ready to go into the pot. And we're going to let that simmer while I chop up the sausages. I guess somebody was hungry. They found this in the fridge and <laughs> took a nibble. Uh, it's a problem with pre-cooking things with the family. You never know what's going to happen to it, if they're going to find it or not. I like to make these into little like smiley face half moon shapes. So once those are all chopped up and ready to go, they can just go in the pan. Now if this were um, linguisa, you wouldn't have to pre-brown it. You would just kind of open up the skin and then run your knife along the edge of the skin and the meat will just crumble out and you can just throw that right in the pan. But these chicken sausages are kind of pale and anemic looking, so uh, my kids don't really like the look of them unless I brown them. Okay, let me hold this up like this so you can see. So that's all in there and I'm just giving that a stir. While that's simmering, we'll put in salt, maybe between a half and a teaspoon. So we'll throw that in. Nice grind of fresh pepper. And I have some dried thyme leaves. We're going to throw in 
oh, I don't know, a good amount of that. That probably equals about a half a teaspoon, I'd say. And then since I like my soup a little spicy, I'm going to throw in some more red pepper flakes. Probably about an eighth of a teaspoon. Give that a stir. See all those nice herbs and spices on there. And I'm just going to let that cook for about 10 minutes until the celery and the carrots are a little bit softened. Okay, now it's been about 10 minutes. And as you can see, everything's getting a little more wilty. And there's a nice brown crust on the bottom of the pan, which is my favorite thing. So that's where all the flavor is. And so when we pour in the chicken broth, that will bring up all the flavor. All right, so then the next thing to do is add our baggie of leftover kale and white beans with the garlic and the onions and the lemon juice and the thyme and the sage. So that's all in there already. So that makes that easy peasy. And as I said, I like more white beans. So I have now a can of small white beans. Those were the full size ones. I'm going to add about half of this just to give it a little variety in the size of the beans. I'm just going to mix that all together. And then just pour in I think all of this chicken stock. And I love these little boxes of stock. They're so easy and convenient. They're shelf stable, so you just keep them in your pantry. And anytime you want to make soup, bam, there you go. Uh, you don't have to start with a, you know, doing something to a chicken. Now I'm just going to pour in the chicken stock. Of course, if you wanted to leave out the sausage and use vegetable broth, this could be a vegetarian soup very easily. Yeah, it could even be completely vegan. There we go. Take a peek in there. Can you see it? There. Oh, isn't that pretty? Mm -mm. And it smells, oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. So now I've turned the heat right up on this because now that I've added in the cold kale um, from the fridge and the room temperature chicken stock, it needs to come up to a nice, uh, not quite a boil, just below a boil. So it's really nice and hot when you put it into the crock pot. And I have my crock pot set up here. Okay, this is just about to start bubbling, so I'm going to add my cup of water. Give that a stir. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn off the heat. I'm going to transfer this over to the crock pot. All right, and we have splash down. So I'm going to put the lid on that. I've started my crock pot on hot. So if you're going to serve this in just a couple of hours, say two hours, you might want to leave it on high. My kids aren't going to be eating this for six hours or so, so I'm going to turn mine to low. And I'm just going to leave it, and it's going to cook all day. And when everybody gets home, dinner will be waiting for them in the crock pot. So that's the recipe for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give it a try for your family. It really is delicious. So take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.